Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and welcome back to the Super Carrier and the office of the F-18C Hornet. Today we've got a very exciting mission to walk you guys through, and that is mission 13 of Baltic Dragon's upcoming Raven 1 campaign, which is of course based off of Kevin Miller's fantastic novel of the same name that follows Flip Wilson's adventures with VFA-64 Ravens aboard the fictional USS Valley Forge as they engage in combat operations around the Strait of Hormuz. Now, the first time I ever read this novel, I knew it absolutely had to become a campaign within DCS World, and Baltic Dragon has taken up that mantle to create the novel within DCS World. Uh, Kevin Miller and Vincent Aiello, the Fighter Pilot Podcast, have come together to actually consult with Baltic Dragon on how to build a narrative within the campaign that fits the novel of the book. Uh, because if you guys recall, if you've read it, it only details about three to four missions from Flip's point of view. And so some more storyline and some extra storyline had to be built around the missions to create a full-fledged DCS World campaign. So as a result, the mission briefings actually read like a story, and there is some additional storyline that is supplementary to the book that comes with the campaign as well. So I think you guys are really, really going to enjoy that. And the book just simply fits within DCS World so perfectly that it was really something that had to happen. And as I said, it's kind of become a bit of a community project as well. A number of YouTubers within the DCS World community have lent their voices to various characters uh, in the novel. Uh, I voice Weed, which is Flip Wilson's best friend within the novel. A few of my real-life female friends have voiced uh, Psycho and Olive within the campaign, as well as if you guys have seen different YouTubers make videos on the campaign showing off their voices as well. So the campaign is pretty complex. And you guys are going to hear a lot of terminology and new things that you probably haven't heard before uh, as we walk you guys through this campaign mission. But don't worry about it too much. They're not going to throw you into the deep end right away. This is a mission that's getting close to the finale of the campaign. And there goes a Moon Shadows cap jet going out to give us some cap for our strike today. So the mission will, or the campaign will ramp up in intensity from mission one all the way through the end of the campaign. So because this is more towards the end, this is a pretty advanced mission. I do recommend knowing as much about the F-18 in and out as possible before you jump into this campaign. But don't worry about being completely overwhelmed from the very start. And there goes the second cap jet. And hopefully they'll be on station soon for us to give us some cover from those Iranian MiGs that are roving around out there. And we'll go ahead and shut the canopy. One thing that I highly, highly recommend when it comes to playing these missions is because we have a relatively small area of operations around the Strait of Hormuz, as well as it's a very complicated uh, missions within this campaign, you want to have as much done as possible on the boat in terms of setting up your jet. Um, get as much done as you possibly can uh, before you actually leave the deck in order to stay ahead of things. Um, that's always what I recommend. Make sure you get your raw gear turned on, your dispensers turned on, everything you need to get, need to get right into combat uh, right away because, like I said, the Strait of Hormuz, not a very big geographical area. The campaigns are compli complex, and uh, you guys will see as we fly through this mission how quickly and fast-paced things can move. So we're going to go ahead and do a radio check in five seconds. Sword 2-3. Sword 
four. Radio check on Pry. Sword two one. Sword two two. Sword two three. Sword two four. All right, so the CO of the Moon Shadows is actually leading our strike. We've got a combined strike between the Ravens and Moon Shadows today. It's going to be an unconventional seed mission against a few SA-15 Tor batteries that are stationed on Greater Two Mile and that have been a bit of a thorn on the side of the CSG-4 carrier group. So we're going to go ahead and head out and fire our harms from different points on the compass, so that way those Tors have to fire their, their SAMs at various points in order to actually hit all the harms coming at them. So hopefully we'll saturate them. And then if we don't, we also have some HM65Es on board uh, in order to hit them while they're reloading their magazines of SAMs, as well as potentially for any targets of opportunity or secondary targets that may pop up for us. So the Moon Shadows jets are carrying four harms each. We're carrying two harms along with two LNAVs. We also, of course, got a centerline tank as well. Um, the reason I am on Takan rather than on Waypoint to start off here is we're going to be meeting up our jets, uh, our wingmen, on the 355 radial for a DME of 15 nautical miles from the carrier. Um, so you'll have to be definitely versed in some uh, kind of IFR terminology when it comes to flying these missions in order to be able to navigate through things pretty well and understand what's happening around you and understand the mission briefings themselves. While the book is incredibly, incredibly easy to understand for the layman, the uh, supplementary story information that comes with the campaign itself is very much uh, geared towards um, DCS World players, and so it's going to have a lot more technical terminology in it, um, which I think is fantastic for me personally. So we'll go ahead and tell the ground crew to remove our chocks. Chief, remove the wheel chocks. While he's doing that, we'll make sure we have the correct amount of takeoff trim. All right. We're going to go for Cat 1. We're going to make sure... Yep. Hook is on carrier, as well as our anti-skid is turned off. Anti-skid braking systems are great for wet runways. Not a good idea for carriers. We've got a pretty calm day today. Not much in the way of wind. A little bit of cloud cover, but not too bad. It's pretty scattered for the most part. Alright, plane director is telling us to spread our wings. Make sure that's locked. Seats on. Alright, we got no issues, no warnings. Make sure we get hooked up here. And lineup's pretty good. Not perfect, but it'll work for today. Alright, we'll stop here. He's going to run to the side. Our safety inspector is going to make sure our wing fold mechanism is good. Launch bar is coming down. Push it up. We're going to hit the shuttle, and we're going to push some more power to get up and over the shuttle and get into tension. There we go. Throttle's back. Launch bar is coming up. Good to go. All right, looking at the Catapult officer now. Power's coming up into afterburner. Control light. Working for anything. No warnings. No beeps. No no boops. We're good to go. Salute. He's checking his guys. His guys are good. We're good to go. All right. Yeehaw. And into the air. Gears up. Flaps are up. Clearing turn. So I have noticed, <laughs> interestingly, once you come off of the uh, the ship, 
you get a little bit of a stutter in DCS World, a little bit of a kind of a, a kachunk within DCS World, for lack of a better term. And if you hit the gear up key, the G key, um, right when that stutter happens, the gear won't come up and you'll overspeed the gear. So just keep that in mind. I've done that a couple times there. I've almost almost did it again there, which wasn't good. So uh, just keep that in mind for when you play through DCS. We're going to throw on the labels here and we can see our moon shadow strike lead already turning towards the 355 radio. So we'll go ahead and follow them. Now we're going to need to climb up to 22,000 feet. The moon shadows, the lead element of our strike, are going to be stacked up at 21,000 feet. We'll make sure that we get to our radar page, get to TWS, EW. Standby, there we go on strike. Frequency. You can see our wingman has come off the deck. Which it's good. Radio check on Pry. Sword two one. Sword two two. Sword two three. Sword two four. We're now passing the 355 radial, so we'll go ahead and push it to waypoints, and we'll go up and fly to our stack up point. At this point, we'll go ahead and get our FLIR ready to go. All right, that's good to go. We're going to have everything ready to go to get rid and punch off that centerline tank, just in case we need to. Let me check the F-10 map, just make sure that our wingman has made it off the deck. He has. There he is. Okay. This is a kind of a pre-alpha build of this campaign, so do expect there may be issues, and that's why I am checking. Just make sure that our wingman is back there with us. All right. All right, so we got a cyanite, which is the code word for SA-6 in this mission that is going to be out there looking for us. Our push time is 1720, so we've got about seven minutes to get there, so we're good to go on time. You will be flying with very realistic, prototypical loadouts. So in this loadout, we have two harms, two LMAVs, and two sidewinders. We do not have an AMRAM. We have a we have a lightning pod standing in for at flare, but that's it. We do not have any AMRAMs on board, so keep that in mind in case you do run into any enemy air opposition. There's the wingy. Go ahead and push the power up a bit. Getting a little bit late. We got 27 nautical miles to go. And we still got to get up to 22,000 feet. Through a soft little cloud there. We can see our wingman's right there with us. It's a beautiful day over the Persian Gulf. And as you guys can see, we are in a very small area of operations. I mean, Greater Two Mile Island is just right off our nose out there, about 
probably maybe about 80 nautical miles out. So as you can see, you've really just got to be ahead of everything you're doing in order to make sure that you don't get behind uh, what you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be doing it. All right, FLIR is good to go. There's the moon shadows out in front of us on our FLIR. Kind of fun. We're tracking him in a point track mode. <laughs> enough tomfoolery we'll go ahead and get back to what we're supposed to be doing get back to navigation mode go ahead and push the radar out a little bit see what's out in front of us four bar at let's go for actually a two bar for 80 degree azimuth we're coming up on 22,000 feet One thing to keep in mind that may be confusing to some DCS World players when they first jump into the Raven 1 campaign is your COM 1, this guy here, is going to always be referred to as your primary radio or PRI, and COM 2, which is going to be this radio here of course, is going to be referred to as your auxiliary radio or AUX. So keep that in mind when it comes to switching radios and switching frequencies. Is this our moon shadow? Yep, that's our moon shadow cap out there in front of us. And we'll go ahead and throw the autopilot on. Help us out here as we get ready to push. We've got three minutes to our actual push time, so we're going to be on station as frag pretty soon. Set up our knee board here. We can see We can see any information we need, waypoints, tankers, things like that. All good to go. And we'll start entering into a left-hand orbit. We're only going to be orbiting for about two minutes here. And we can see the Moonshadow CO and his bleed jet down here off to our left. Turn up the volume of our radio. Tighten our orbit slightly. Alright, Sapphire is the code name, the search radar right here of our secondary target. The SA 15s, the TORs, of course, are our primary target. Alright, so these are bandits out here on our radar display, I believe. Yeah, that should be about them. 300 for 99. That's not great. They're pretty close. Sword 2 1 flight. Fence in. Sword 2 2 fence. fence in. No alibis. There's our tour on our clear page. Sword two four fenced in, no alibis. Sword two one fenced in, no alibis. All right, we are good to go. Swords, prepare to push. Go. All right, we are pushing. Go ahead and have our arms ready to go. Clear page is up. Go ahead and knock off the autopilot.
Go to full mill, make a nice tight turn, coming around towards waypoint three and our target point. So sword two three, our missile launch time is 172345. And we're gonna be pushing to the southeast of the island, firing our harms at a more or less northeast heading. We're gonna come out in a this direction here. We're gonna check the map again. All right, we're good. Our harms. We want to have in TOO mode. All right, we've got them on the search radar, which is going to be Sapphire, which is our secondary target. But we want to be going for Topaz One, which is our primary target. Sword two four. This will be right there on the end of the island. All right, there's the dirt. And we can see what looks like probably a little truck next to the tour. We can see the spinning radar dish on the tour on our FLIR, so we definitely know what we're targeting. So we got a couple tours down there. We're gonna be going from our vantage point, then this, that uh, Topaz 1 tour is going to be in the center from our vantage point. We're gonna go nose on in just a moment here. We've got one minute and 45 seconds, or one minute about 40 seconds for till missile release. Our wingman, Sword24, is doing his thing. He's coming out further to the south for his missile launch. We're not going super fast at the moment just because we don't wanna to get too in front of Sword21 who is our leader, who's going to be firing his missiles first. We're going to be firing in sequence of, I believe, 10 second intervals from the north to the south. Alright, those bandits are out here, roughly in about that area right there. So we'll go ahead and have our HMD on, just uh, in case. Got about uh, 50 seconds till missile, missile launch, so we're going to push up the throttle here. Give some extra oomph behind those harms. Alright, we're targeting the middle tour. Check the target again in our FLIR. That's definitely a valid, good target. Twenty-five seconds to launch. We're still flying offset from the target here. We're gonna turn and go nose on. And the box for our TOO is over our target reticle for our FLIR page, so we are good to go. Uncaged, right? Sword Magnum. Magnum. Topaz three. Uncaged, Magnum. Sword and we can see my tour is shooting at the guy. Com muscles coming in from the north. Which is exactly what we want. We're gonna come off to the right here, in order to make sure our pod isn't getting masked, so we get good BDA. We'll drill in our SA page. We're still outside the threat rings for those SA 15s. Tours are. Rather close in point defense systems. And so that looks like it's going to work perfectly. They went after those harms from our north. <laughs> nice, we got them. Perfect. Exactly as planned. Looks like a couple harm, at least one harm, got shot down by a tour. And altogether, that seemed very successful. <laughs> Another harm. A little injury, to, insult to injury there. All sorts, 
Sensors on your targets. What luck. Sword 2 3, good effects on Topaz 1. Bandits are still out here. They're getting closer. They're at 62 nautical miles. All right, we got some hostile MiG 29s out here. Strike is now ordering us to continue, which probably means we're going to hit that secondary target. This is lead. Anyone have Sapphire on their RWR? Sword 2 2. Negative. And we got 29 spikes. About our four o'clock. Sword two three, no joy. Sword two four, negative. Sword right, two, no sapphire. Break. Sword two three, sword two two. Put your flare on waypoint four. Report when you have any contact on sapphire. Sword two two. Sword two three. Sword two three. All right, looks like someone's engaging those MiG-29, so we've got eyes on the threat here. All right, I'm getting some splash from an F-18 behind me. It's a little disconcerting. So Scabbard two, shot down three, one of those MiGs. We're getting our pod ready to go to Lays. We're flying top cover at the moment. Uh, we're going to see if two fours rifles hit the target. If not, we'll go ahead and engage uh, and come in from a high position here. All right, so we've got a bandit that's hot on us from my six o'clock here. It's a little disconcerting here. Come on, uh, Scabbard, we need you to do your job. All right, I can see a, I can see a blip out there. I can see visual contact on something on my six o'clock. That's probably not going to be a friendly. So I'm gonna go ahead, probably come around on this guy. Just lost. There he is. So I'm gonna flow air to air on him. All right. So he just launched on me. too close for comfort. Alright, so we're coming around this guy. <laughs> we're a bit in a dogfight now. Over our target area. And coming in. Yep, that's an Iranian MiG-29. And looks like Scabbard finally did his job. <laughs> Alright. So at least he went after me, and not after our guy who was trying to get a shack on the target down there.
We'll flow back to air to ground. Alright, we'll check the BDA on this. Alright, so looks like our Sword 2-4 did in fact shack the target. So basically what's happening here. Sword 24, Tally Skunk directly south from Topaz. Holy shit, it is a sinker. Sword 21, Roger. Sword 23, Sword 21. Sword 21. I want you and 24 to deal with this. ID the sinker, report back to strike. 21 and 22 will continue to freelance north of Mother. We'll see you back on the ship. Sword 23, Roger. So let's talk about what just happened here. Two so, four, sword two three, push channel three on aux. All right, so we're channel three on aux, and we'll check, check in on aux. aux. Sword two three. Sword two four. Let's have a closer look at that sinker. Put your floor on it. What was its position? Ten miles directly south from Topaz. Roger, wait one. All right, so 10 miles south of Topaz. We know that Topaz is this guy here. So we're going to extend north just slightly, do a 180, fly on a heading of 180 degrees, and go ahead and put our FLIR uh, into VVSLV like we've got here. We'll look for the target, and then uh, hopefully we'll find it here. If we don't find it right away, for the interest of time, we'll go ahead and uh, turn on some labels and help us out a little bit. Um, in terms of what just happened there, so basically what uh, happened was uh, Strike said there were skunks in the area of the Strait of Hormuz, so the lead element detached from the flight and are flying north towards our towards Rock, which Rock is Kassab, which is at the uh, middle point of the Strait of Hormuz. They're going to go and search after different things, and then uh, of course 2-4 here, uh, which is our wingman, he found a submarine, which is a sinker. Sinker is codenamed for a submarine, and so uh, we're going to go and investigate. If it's an uh, enemy submarine, we're authorized to sink any enemy submarines that we see, uh, because that is something that the Iranians definitely want to keep around. So we're flying over Topaz, we're going to go heading 180 degrees. We'll go ahead and go into snowplow mode. We'll zoom out the pod. I think we're going to be able to see much. 10 miles south. We're going to be in this general vicinity. Scanning. Yeah, I think our best bet at this point is just turn on some labels here and help us out. Yeah. So we kind of missed it here. We're going to go, we're going to delete the target. We'll go back to the velocity vector slave. We'll come around. We'll flow back to air to ground.
So a lot of the communicating you're going to be doing on the radio is in, instead of being through the F10 uh, radio map, it's going to be through the spacebar commands. Maybe a little bit less immersive, I guess you could say, but still works just fine. There's our sub. We'll go ahead and put him in a point track. Perfect. And... We'll, yeah, we'll keep it in FLIR mode for now. Alright, we got eyes on him. to the left, give our pod as good of a chance as possible. Alright, we still got the sunstone. Alright, so we're swapping roles at this point. 2-4 gets to be MIG bait this time, and I get to engage with my 65 Echoes. So we're going to roll back in on this target. I'm going to go ahead and turn my HMD off. Whoops. Just to get that out of the way. Alright. We're uncaged. Firing and rifle. Sword, two, three, rifle. I'm going to come off to the right to ensure that we don't lose contact or mask our pod. And just missed him. Looks like the missile flew right over the water line of the ship and impacted just after the ship. So we'll go ahead and come around for a reattack. Armed laser again. And we'll come around. This time we'll go for a bit of a higher angle. That may help. Alright, our fuel state's getting close to Joker. We got 500 pounds. Yep. Sword 2 3 copies engaging. Alright, we're coming around. We may have to reacquire the target with our FLIR. Nope, we don't. Alright. Yeah, I messed it up, so we're gonna go VVSLV again, and we'll find him visually. Our Mavic's already uncaged, so that's gonna help. Is our target. Yeah. 
this aspect will help us engage this target a little bit better. We're going to squeeze the trigger. And rifle. Sword 2 3, rifle. Altitude. Altitude. And impact. Perfect. Good hit. Good hit. Sierra Hotel. And that is one dead submarine. Strike. Sword 2 3. Good effects on Sunstone. Sword 2 3. Strike. Copy. You're clear to RTV. Strike. Sword 2 3 is RTV. Two four two three, turning to waypoint five. Join up. Sword two four. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and head home towards waypoint five. We'll check our knee board just to make sure that we know that waypoint five is egress point at twenty thousand. Perfect. We'll get our cockpit reconfigured for more of a bingo. navigation scenario. Bingo. All right, we're at bingo, so we're going to reduce our bingo state down to 3,000. That was actually our joker call, which is at which point we should start heading home. And our bingo state is going to be at 3,000, at which point we'll go ahead and find a tanker. and turn our FLIR off for now. We don't need it anymore. Here's our wingman back there. All right, we're at 20,000. We'll go ahead and level it off. So interestingly, keep in mind, this is a mission design kind of point here, is see our wingman who's back here, who is 2-4. Uh, He's behind us back there. He's coming to join us, join up. Um, on our SA page, normally we would be a C and he would be a D because he is the fourth jet in the strike uh, as well, or in the formation, and I'm the third jet in the formation. Um, that was what you would see in multiplayer. However, with these very heavily scripted missions that Baltic Dragon creates, um, our wingmen, our leaders, um, you know, flights around us, bad guy flights, good guy flights, they're going to be spawning and despawning all the time and being replaced by new aircraft. And so that happens kind of dynamically through the campaign based on events and how they warrant. And so uh, just keep that in mind that your SA page isn't going to be able to tell you exactly who your wingman is all the time. And I found that to be a little bit uh, confusing when I first started uh, flying through this mission to bring it to you guys um, in a kind of a walkthrough video. However, um, you know, things, uh, you'll, you'll get used to it and you'll get used to uh, keeping your situational awareness again. Uh, keep in mind that Baltic Dragon makes the AI pretty darn smart, so we shouldn't have to worry about it too, too much here. Um, I've played through this mission probably five times now. I, Baltic Dragon has made little adjustments to it every time I've flown through it, and as a result, it's become better. But every time I fly through it, something new happens, something new pops up. Um, like, uh, I've never missed with my Maverick on the submarine before. Um, I've been the one being told to attack Sapphire before. Sometimes that MiG-29 sneaks through, sometimes it doesn't. So um, this, these missions and these campaign missions are going to have a lot of replayability to them as well, because not things don't happen the same every single time, which is very cool in my opinion. So we can go ahead and turn off 
everything that could be potentially dangerous to our jet. Once we hit waypoint 5, I believe we'll fence out. There we go. <laughs> everything is safed up. There he is. Switch Marshall. Sword 24, switching Marshall. Check my radio frequency. It's Marshall 144.5. We're good to go there. Push towards waypoint seven. Six three. <laughs> We're a little bit faster than that. All right. We'll go ahead and slow it down a little bit. Pull off the auto throttle. Bring it down to Mach point seven. The BRC was, so let's check it here. BRC 098. Alright, so we'll go ahead and start descending down to 2,000 feet. I'll go ahead and put my HSI page down here between my legs so I can see a little bit better.
All right, so we've got the Moonshadow Cap Flight are now recovering on the carrier out in front of us. Now we can see the carrier, just a lonely little dot out here. Well, we're expecting a case one. I think the Baltic Dragon was expecting a case three that it would be dark in the mission creation here. But uh, we'll go ahead and follow the the mission instructions. And there he goes. <laughs> that we see her at 10. Betty. Alright, now that we're within 10, we gotta slow it down to 250 knots. We got a bit fast there. I should have been slowing it down earlier. It's been a while since I've landed on the carrier, so let's see how this goes. Set the carrier. Good there. So we've got some altitude to lose and some airspeed to lose. We're at a good fuel state for a carrier landing. So we're good there. The RC seems to be maybe a little off. Should have paid attention to the Marshall controller more. Six, singer, singer, Charlie. A little bit low, a little bit fast. So this key to a good carrier landing, from what I've found, is flying a good pattern around the carrier. That is always key. So we'll go ahead and auto lock, auto throttles at 250. And our HSI flips. go and we'll enter into a nice gentle turn looks down good there
There's the ship. Thing goes at 3,000. Everything's looking good. Looks like uh, Baltic Dragon put this ship here at, in a good position to be our position three point at five nautical miles. Should have had a bit of a tighter turn going, but we'll tighten it up here. Position three. Go ahead and turn auto throttles off. Kick off the autopilot, and we'll go ahead and commence. We'll get down to 800 feet and 350 knots. Some more altitude. down. Good there. A little high. A little slow. Probably a little wide here. Looks like the deck's clear, and all right, we definitely got high. Put the flaps in gear. We're a little close to the boat. Got to go ahead and get on speed. There we go. We recovered a little bit there. <laughs> okay guys, please excuse that horrific landing. It's been quite a while since I've been behind the boat in the FA-18C Hornet, and as you guys can see, I am certainly out of practice. So let's go ahead and get parked on the deck, and that will be it for Mission 13 of Baltic Dragon's upcoming Raven 1 campaign. Now, like I said earlier in the video, when I first read this novel, I knew this book had to absolutely come to DCS World in some way, shape, or form. And Baltic Dragon has done a fantastic job of bringing the story into DCS World, and it truly is a match made in heaven with the DCS F-18 model, the supercarrier, and the Persian Gulf map. 
it was just too perfect not to pursue this project. And uh, so big thanks to Baltic Dragon for allowing me to play and voice uh, Weed, which is Flip Wilson's best friend in the squadron. I like to think that I maybe got that role because I helped Baltic Dragon learn to fly and fight in the FA-18 before he went on to tackle this big, big project. And uh, it's a really fantastic campaign, guys. Baltic Dragon's at the top of his game. You're really going to enjoy how immersive, how fun, and how replayable these missions are. Um, I have a big thank you to Baltic Dragon for really bringing me into DCS World. I bought the Mirage 2000, flew through his campaign for the Mirage, and was instantly hooked uh, by the awesome immersion of the missions that he created for the Mirage, and it is just another step up here in the Raven 1 campaign. So um, I hope you guys got a good idea of what to expect from these campaign missions. This was a rather short campaign mission, they range in longevity from uh, three hours all the way down to just under about an hour here for this mission. So there's a wide range and like I said, it's very re replayable. Things don't happen twice very often uh, in terms of testing replays that I've done on these missions. And so you guys are going to have a ton of fun. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and certainly take a look at Baltic Dragon's other material for other airplanes. So uh, thanks a lot guys and fly safe as always.